I have a short video for you today with something interesting that I came across while creating the next module of my basic photography course. This module is all about photo editing. Members, I'll explain a little bit more at the end of this video where to find that course, but I was editing a photo as an example. I was showing the difference between a raw file and a JPEG file when it comes to editing. Now, let me preface this by saying that I do not think that you need to shoot one way or another. If you want to set your camera to auto and JPEG small, and you like your results, awesome. If you want to shoot in raw and use all manual all the time, super, <laughs> you do you. Here's the situation. This particular photo was a part of my review of the Sony RX100 Mark VII. It is the latest in the line of Sony's one inch sensor point and shoot cameras. I will link to the full review in the description of this video, just in case you're interested, but as I was reviewing the camera, I wanted to see what the JPEG files looked like as well as the RAW files. I mean, it's a point and shoot camera after all, and I would not expect the majority of users of the camera to be setting it to RAW and getting into those fine details of editing. I know there are some of you out there that do and enjoy it, but it seemed fair to try both. So while I was out for sunrise, I set the camera up to record RAW plus JPEG. I used auto white balance because the conditions were changing relatively quickly and I either used the vivid or landscape creative style. It doesn't really matter which for the purposes of this video, but I was switching back and forth that morning. And here are the photos that came out of the camera. This is the raw file and this is the JPEG file. Underwhelming, right? <laughs> but then I edited both of them in Lightroom and I got this and this. They look slightly different, but can you tell which is which? Keep in mind that I used only basic editing techniques in Lightroom, none of the fancy stuff, no selective editing or masking. This took only a few minutes. So this is the edited RAW file and this is the edited JPEG file. Pretty cool, right? They are nearly identical. The reason that this may be of interest to you is file size. In this case, the RAW file was 20.9 megabytes and the JPEG file was 12.3 megabytes. If you add that up over hundreds or thousands of files, you end up with a substantial difference in storage space, both on the card in the camera and at home, required to hold and back up your images. Now, you certainly do have more latitude in processing with RAW files, but it might not be as necessary as you think to shoot RAW, especially with newer cameras like the one that I was using. There are lots of arguments why you would want to use RAW in certain situations, how every camera is different, or why JPEG worked so well here. I mean, just my being there with my camera was more than half the battle. I always talk about timing, light, and location. If I had not gotten myself there that morning, well before dawn, it wouldn't have mattered how my camera was set. I wouldn't have been there for the colorful sunrise. I encourage you to experiment a little bit with your camera and let me know how it goes. Also, members, there's a link below to the beginning photography course with the newest module on editing. At this point, the course is right around four hours long and there is still a little bit left for me to complete. If you are interested in my courses and my other members only benefits, check out the join button below or the link in the description. And that's it for today. Just a quick tidbit. Thank you for watching.